It's gotta be in the moment. <clears throat> Everything's gotta be in the moment. I got my fucking dude. All right, so I made it a habit of every time I get Burger King, which is trash food, by the way. Burger King fucking sucks, but it's like the first place in between my house and my work, right? So that yeah. is at my laziest. I am like, oh, I'll get Burger King, I guess, whatever. Made it a habit to get chicken fries along with my burger, even though the chicken fries. This is the conundrum with those because they're del- it's like Arby's. It's the same thing, but. If the chicken fries aren't fresh, like immediately fresh, then they're just trash tier garbage food. Like Arby's fries, Arby's curly fries are the fucking worst because they're never fresh. You're you're incredibly lucky if you get fresh curly fries, right? So every time I go to Arby's, I always get crinkle fries because they kind of suck, but they're always fresh because no one gets crinkle fries at Arby's. So they always have to drop new crinkle fries. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this isn't about going. this isn't okay. about Arby's though. Yeah, all right, all right. So I get I get the uh, I get the chicken fries because I think usually like three or four of them suck ass out of eight, and then the other four are like decent, really good if you get fresh ones. But you they yeah. always throw in really old ones in there too, every single time. Never not happened to me, and I always feed those to my dog. And Molly, she always sits. On, I have two couches in my living room. Molly, she always sits in the other on the other couch, and she doesn't beg because she knows she's going to get some of these chicken fries. And I have gotten so good at throwing them and bouncing them off of her chest and them landing right in front of her. Like I can do it every time. Like I am perfect <laughs> at throwing chicken fries directly in front of my dog, using her body as a backboard. And so she you're doesn't like even Naruto with those little throwing knives, where they just like <laughs> yeah. ping in everything with the fucking kunai. Yeah. That's that's that must be because, you know, aren't there pets in Naruto? That must be how they ended up learning how to throw stuff. Dude, I've just been rewatching Naruto and it is surprisingly weird because they She's all have like summon animals too, where they make like blood contracts with animals and then it gives them the ability to just like summon them out of space. Who has the who has the squirrel? I haven't seen a squirrel. squirrel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Kakashi sensei. He does. He has dogs. He can summon dogs. Which is pretty cool. And Mr. Naruto summons frogs. Nice. I, I know the dog guy because he's in the fighting games and he's notoriously annoying as fuck. And I just love to play him. He looks just like the dog from JoJo. You're in the fighting game that we played where I yeah. played the dog. You oh, also the, played the dog. The dog guy. Oh, yeah. We picked the dog at the same time. And it, and I lost. But uh, so the the dog I'm thinking of is a big dog. And I don't think he summons him. I think it's just a dog that follows him around. I don't know, man. Does I'm it have a like Naruto a, a bandana? Because he summons a dog and it has its own like ninja headband, which they didn't com- get the ninja headbands until they completed ninja elementary school. So really, it makes me like, wonder, like did the dog go to with school? The sash? Yeah, yeah, like you don't get a sash till you're a boy scout or whatever. So I'm like, this dog completed ninja elementary school. Well, good for him. You know, like some of these dogs, they got jobs so like un- unlike unemployed people. I don't know where I was going with that. Whatever, unemployed people started. don't have jobs. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Gaming Together, a cooperative What's going podcast. On? I'm your host, Philip, and I'm here with my co-partner, Nave. Each pod, we play through card experience, then relate to you, the listener, if this game is the creme de la creme of co-op, or something better off playing solo. I'm just trying to be in the moment, Nave. I don't know, I just had to check and make sure someone didn't add a 15 O's <laughs> and, like, eat the seven E's <laughs> into the fucking, I don't know, I'm, I'm going okay. Wait, did you ask how I'm doing? Probably. I don't know. I, I usually don't say that at the end. Yeah. Okay. But we are a video games podcast. So we're going to be talking about Dungeons 4, which I think is the title. I'm not actually sure. Is that the full title? I think it is. Dungeons 4. Very mm-hmm. creative. Yeah. Which this game is very creative. I can't wait to get into it. But before we get there, let's just check in with what games we've been playing. So, Nave, what games have you been playing? Um,. So I finished Near Automata. This is going to be weird because all these episodes are out of order. I don't know when. So I finished Near Automata, though. And I might have already brought this up at some point in the past. But I just now did it. And it was very good. Might be my game of the year. I know I've been saying that a <laughs> lot lately. <laughs> well, no, no, I agree. Like, I've, like, every episode, I'm like, it's a masterpiece. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, so, I mean, do, do you want to talk spoilers for Nier? 
let's not spoil a whole lot, but dude, I've got to talk to you about it at some point because holy shit, we haven't, we don't talk to each other outside of the podcast. So I try really hard not to. <laughs> yeah. But, um, man, this game, Nier Automata is a work of art, man. This game plays with inside the medium of games. It uses the medium that it is inside to further a narrative in a way that I've never seen a video game do. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's so funny because it's like it. It's like if you're. It, well, I want to say it's not like fourth wall breaking, but it does break the fourth wall where you're. It's like you're watching a play where the characters find out they're in a play, but then you realize it's not about the characters in the play. It's about you in the audience watching the play happen as they figure out what's happening. It's like there's so many weird steps to it. Yeah, and it's just as good. It's so good. Like I, I went around because I already have near replicant. And I started that back up, but then I remembered, like, I, as soon as I started playing it, I was like, oh, man, there's some parts coming up that I'm not going to want to play through. Like, the fucking, I don't know. They're, I, like, I don't, I, I'm just not going to. Fight 17 times. Yeah, see, like, that's the thing. I, I'm so worried about, like, when people play Nier Automata, because all of the fucking achievements for the third, for Route C, you have to beat Nier Automata multiple times. Like, in air quotes. Really, you it's like, you play through chapter one through, like, ten twice and then that unlocks chapters 11 to through 15 or whatever you know what i'm saying yeah it's kind of like devil may cry 4 didn't they do something similar where you beat everything as nero and then you go back and play as the fun character i don't know because i don't think it made it past nero because i'm like yeah. what's up with this oh, this is a glove guy made it to like the second level of the game and i'm like i'm gonna go play halo 3 He's a cry me. Oh, I get it. You're emo. I'm emo too. three days grace all i feel is pain <laughs> whatever the fucking song is that's it but um yeah so uh man i'm really worried about near automata because all of the route c which is chapters 11 through whatever the fuck i said um those are all rare achievements so i'm really i'm sure that people got to the end of route a and then we're just like it's just like in signalis when you finish the ending a which by the way now that i've played this game i there is so much connective tissue between near automata and and signalis Whoa, the game about robot girls they're connected yeah. well even like the the gestalt like i'm like i'm like seeing all this shit and i'm just like dude they're these this game oh my god like the signals people loved near automata they had to but um man i know that people played signalis and stopped at the end of at the fake out ending and it's the same with this game i know for a fact that people didn't get past the a like didn't go further than the a route because they started the b route it was it felt exactly the same because it essentially was you were just playing from the other character's perspective but you're basically doing the same things because your care that character's always with you you know what i mean there's only a couple yeah. parts where that were at nine uh, nines and uh and uh to be separate so it's like uh, it makes me feel like shit because that the route, the C route, where like you see the aftermath of the of the ending of the first two routes, it is so fucking, it's so profound. <laughs> like I just I don't have words for it. the third character? Like A was it A uh, something? It's A two. A two. I think yeah, it's A two. Fuck, I don't know. Now it doesn't now matter. Like you have two B nine S and A two probably. Because she's a better robot than 2B, I think. Okay, it is or A2. Some... Yeah. Yeah, A2 is supposed to be like a fucking... A bad, the badass models that were the beta models. Yeah. That were made before all the other models. And then there's some shit about... Uh, like, there's no... It, I mean, even saying all this shit... Even, it is, it's a little spoilery, but it's like, you're not it gonna fucking make know. Sense. Yeah, yeah, you're not gonna fucking know, know what the fuck we're talking about. Oh, and you were like, Emil's in here? And I'm like kind of yes he is dude i have a fucking i i should clip it i don't know if it, the fucking vod is still alive but when i see emil pop up hold on i'm gonna go to my twitch and see if the vod's still there but when i saw emil pop up i almost fucking lost my mind let me see if the vod's still there This thing's weird, Tubi. Let's kill it. Wait, what? No. Good idea. No! Well, dear listener at home, if you're unfamiliar, Emil was a critical character in the first Nier. Very important to the whole plot. Like, Emil was super relevant. But 
in the second game, he's or not the second game in in the autonomous. He's not as relevant, but he shows up and it is just strange whenever you see him. Like it is a weird moment. Yeah, it's it's pretty fucking crazy. Like it might just because we played near original near otherwise no one would it wouldn't make a difference if you found a meal yeah for real you'd be like oh it's the guy it's the it's the it's guy who, it's robot. yoko taro yoko yeah. whatever because it's his it's, head right yeah it's his head that's the mask he always wears in all the photos and stuff the smiling um it's like a round skull with a face type thing uh yeah it's a pretty cool fucking mask i mean it's very noticeable Anyways, you keep you talk about your game that you're playing. So I wrapped up Sonic Heroes, which was recommended by X or our crowd over on X. And I got to say, not a bad game, not a great game, though, as well. So I, if you're going to play any Sonic game, do not play Sonic Heroes. Like this is probably only for like I'm going back for nostalgia reasons because I, uh, you know, never finished it growing up and I could see why. Because the last level is oppressively hard for some reason. Like, I had to use save states just to get through it. Otherwise, I'm like, I don't know how you're supposed to be. And it's not that the game is hard, per se. It's more that the game doesn't want you to win. As you randomly glitch through walls and fall off of stuff, it's, it's not good. So now I'm going to pull up the poll to see what my next game is. But it looks like Nave went on a Twitter rampage, so I can't seem to find. <laughs> oh, my God, dude, I've been on one. OK, so I've been listening to Frederick Nietzsche, and it has just got me in the mood to argue with people. So I've just been arguing with people on the Internet for so much. All these dumb little things. So we we have, like, constantly a million notifications because I'm getting a million likes on it. Because, like, apparently people like it when you're uh, spitting hard facts at <laughs> oh, people. Okay. Yeah. OK, I found it. So I started a new poll. I'm probably going to be going on vacation, so I need a Switch game that I can take on the road. So I put in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Dragon Quest Builders 2, Shin Megumi Tensai 5, and Tactics Ogre Reborn. And you want to take a guess of what one? Uh, which one were, the, were they again? All right, Zelda yeah, Dragon Quest Tactic. Builders 2, uh, SMTV, or Ogre's Tactics. Zelda. Oh yeah, doesn't Zelda matter what Zelda was. Stomped it. It didn't matter what any of these other games were because seventy percent of the votes went to Zelda. Apparently, yeah, everyone's obviously. saying it's really good. Uh, let me see. I bet I can check how much time I actually have in it so far. I found the clip. I'm gonna clip it and send you the clip. Okay. <laughs> okay. So stupid. This thing's weird. Let's kill it. Yeah. So like, just for ever, for everyone to know, like Emil's a huge character in the first game, but Nier Automata is like. The whole time you're playing it, you're like, how the fuck is this a sequel to Nier? Like, there is no connecting tissue at all, except that you shoot little Robots. orbs. Yeah, like, I mean, it's going to be fun. And I, I think Philip will probably, I don't know if he's going to edit that in there. I'll download Maybe. this just in case and throw it in the drive. All right, anyways, Nier anyways. Automata. Nier um, Automata is real good. So I've also been playing... Um, Remind me to throw that in the in the Google Drive. All right, so I've also been playing uh, Resident Evil Four, the Separate Ways DLC, and well, I beat it. So I beat Nier Automata. I beat Separate Ways. I'm going on a fucking rampage. Mostly, I just want to delete shit off my hard drive. Man, dude, Resident Evil Four is so fucking good. A lot of people are really pissed off at the Game Awards right now, but uh, a lot of people are mad that Resident Evil Four got nominated for Game of the Year, and it's like a like a remake, like in quotes. It has a like. I don't know, man. I think this game changes so much about the original game that it's... You can still go back to the original Resident Evil 4 and play that and have a different, unique experience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, and I think that even even in, even if you have a game like Resident Evil 4 Remake, you have like the outline already there for you. You can... like I think that that doesn't negate the fucking effort and and work that the developers have put in, right? And these this game is amazing. That being said... Uh, separate ways. Ada Wong's voice actor fucking sucks, bro. Like so bad. And oh, it's man. not it is not so bad in the original campaign because you just see her a handful, but you this whole DLC you're playing as Ada the whole time. So you're just constantly hearing her talk in like, I don't know what she's imagining as like a sexy spy voice, but she's not it just sounds like it is the same tone throughout the whole game. It's so fucking weird, man. She just has this weird cadence that just is so it, – it's – it especially with all the other voice acting talent in this game because everyone else is giving it 110%. Need a hand? This is it. From yours truly. I can't pass through. 
It's hot. Out of my way. This is getting interesting. Not bad. Night, night. Bingo. It's not nearly as bad as uh, Megan Fox in Mortal Kombat 1. That takes the cake. But this reminded me. Like, I just completely forgot about how unsatisfying her voice, her vocal performance is. But this was it. This is the goof. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so anyways, but Philip, I started playing a game that you talked to me about probably at the beginning of our podcast, uh, Slay the Spire. Yeah, I saw that. I've been seeing it. I've been cheering to myself when I log into Xbox and I see you playing it or whatever. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, well, that it was like, the so weird good. The weird thing is, is that like I was like, oh, I'm going to play this. It's going to be all right. It's going to be indie trash, whatever. And then I played one level and died right away. And I was like, OK, I could have did better. And I was like, no, no, I'm not going to get rogue liked. <laughs> so I put it down. Uh, yeah. And then two days later, I picked it back up and I was like, you know, I could probably do better than last time. And then I win. And I was like, oh, OK, you look at did me. You win, though. So, I, I mean, I won like as far as you can go. Yeah, as far as you go at the beginning and they're like now do it again but harder well yeah so i didn't i didn't even i don't think i unlocked ascension until or i don't know when you unlock anything it doesn't matter but so i beat it with the ironclad or whatever and then you unlock a second character and i'm like yeah sure i'll do it again in one sitting like back to back ass to ass and then i yeah. won again and i was like oh Very i'm good. a fucking i'm a menace at this game but i have wasted three hours so now i can't play anymore <laughs> I got to play something else with a narrative or something. And then I came back yesterday with, and so I'm playing the robot now. Oh, and I, I got He's all so the good. way, I got all the way to the end. I was feeling myself. I got all the way to the end and I was on like the last five, like little pips to get to the boss. And the, and then three fights in a row, I got molested, dude. <laughs> and, and then I died on that third fight. And I was just like, what went wrong? I was like, I was so strong. What went wrong? Like, I don't understand. Like, I really got the RNG was so bad. But I was streaming it. But every time I played, I've been streaming it for Melissa. And Dontre has been jumping in too. And Dontre, this is the guy that I play Magic the Gathering with and all those other card games I used to talk about a lot last year. He fucking hates me with card games. He hates me. So he wants to see me fail. He's watching this. He wants to see me fail. Also, he wants the round to be over so that we can play Halo together. So he's got doubly, he's doubly invested in my failure. And so, but he, he was watching this. This game, I've never played a game that is so fucking topsy-turvy with, like, it has never been more over. I'm going to die. I've never been more serious about how I'm going to die this turn. I'm going to win. I'm going to beat this. I'm going to beat this somehow. Oh, my God, I can't beat him. Oh, my God, I drew really bad. I'm going to die. Oh, my God, we're going to win. You know, it's, like, it's, it's constantly like that. He just that, changes dude. by the hand or by what random move they select, and he's like, he's going to hit me for how much damage next turn? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. And then you draw, you draw like, your 16. It's like that robot has a card that's like, get as much block as cards in your discard pile and i'm like i i had another card that's like just get a card from your discard pile put it in your hand and i go for that card so often i go for that stupid you, block card dude, a lot of it is just don't take damage and you can outlast the enemies like unless they stack if you're fighting one of like the berserkers that every time you do with something that's not an attack and they like increase their damage by one like if you use a skill card or something like that guy then you're like oh no he dude. sees you block and it makes him angrier I fucking hate those raven enemies that do that hex you and then everything you do like gives you a fucking whatever of debuff card that yeah. goes into your deck. Dude, I, there was one time towards the beginning, I had like maybe 16 cards in my deck and then at the end of it I had like a 60 card deck because I had so many of those debuffs because I couldn't kill him. Dude, I was well, there's so many like one cards that are like uh that let you destroy those debuff debuffs though, especially if you're the ironclad like there's a whole build you can do for him that is just exhausting cards or whatever or like blowing them up it's like for yeah, every card you exhaust in your hand you do 20 damage or something crazy like that but of course there's a chance you could end up with like two cards in your deck by the end of the fight dude my so favorite character so far the robot was pretty cool i was fe i didn't like it at first but i was feeling it towards the end of the run but i love that fucking the second one i don't know what it's called twitch the poison dude 
The poison dude, yes. I had this fucking, I had this one round where I, like, played, like, 50 cards. I was just running through them. Like, I was, yeah. I had a bunch of those cards that bring a bunch of daggers out. Oh, I had, yeah. like, daggers, three. Daggers, poison touch. I had, like, so great. there was a, because I had a card that, or not, I drank a potion. I was, like, doing a boss fight. I drank a potion that's, like, get a random skill. And then the two skills sucked, and then the third one was, like, uh, it was the one that just gives me a free dagger at the beginning of my turn. And I had already done that twice in that fight. Yeah. So now I've got three. And then it's like, I had this move that was called the finisher, this card called the finisher, where it does like nine damage times however many attacks you've played. And each of those daggers are free and count as an attack. So I did like 280 damage because I, and I had them like weakened. Oh my God, dude. Sometimes like, I I fucking love card games like this. Unfortunately, I really like this game, so now I'm like worried. Oh, it's so good. I was at dude. work and I was like, dude, I could totally fucking, <laughs> I could totally uh, uh, play on the job. Or something. Yeah, God, dude. <laughs> well, you know, once you like unlock all the characters, once you get like, they give you a fourth dude too. You can also get, and once you have all the characters and you beat the game like so many times, they start giving you those modifiers. Which just like in oh, what was the other card game you played with the creepy guy? Inscription, just like inscription, where you're like, I gotta beat the game with so many modifiers. It's like I gotta beat the game on infernal level thirteen or whatever, and then it's like you beat yeah. it in fourteen unlocks. I'm like great, now I can play fourteen, and each time it just makes the enemies, you know, just harder every time. That's what. That's one thing that I was really ta- thinking about whenever I was playing this game is that how much it reminded me of Inscription because Inscription is the exact same way where well Inscription isn't re- it is a kind of pseudo roguelike but it has a narrative that is constantly moving forward and so uh, as you move to the different chapters of Inscription you get different decks with different play styles and different rules so it is like it is just like this game where each character has their own card sets and the own their own things that yeah. pop up and stuff it's like it, it's the same even with like there is like a robot like deck with like different fucking shapes that you're trying to connect and shit it's like it's really cool how like different each of the characters play because I you love when notice you can get a card from another character's deck into your deck like yeah, if you're like dude. the robot and you get a card that's like, hey, every time you attack, you get a free electric ball surrounding you or whatever. But you're the you're the the ninja dagger poison guy. And so then you're attacking a thousand times with a dagger. So you're just always getting an electric orb that just instantly spawns and gets consumed every time you attack. So it's like every dagger is now worth four extra electric damage. Holy shit. It's so I good. know what you're talking about too. I've never seen it before because I've never like changed characters i haven't i've only done four runs and i'm two for two right now i'm at two for four i don't know how that saying goes i've lost twice one twice and um i did finally run into a a wall the wall that's like there's a card and it it looks like your handwriting a card and i was like what is this and i took it and then i put like i put the card in there that says draw three and then discard one because i was like this looks this sounds good hopefully this will make whoever this is happy and then i left and i was like wait a minute am i gonna get that (laughs) you're the one who's supposed to make happy you're like if this run isn't going well i can put a really good card here and get a next run that's fucking cool also, I'm always going for the question marks. I'm get, I get, Dude, I get always cursed. do the question marks. I get so. cursed so much. I'm like, Dude, I every fucking run, I'm always like got like four curses going on. I'm like, have oh, you man. gotten the sacrificial dagger yet? No. Okay, so there's like, I get one the of the bell question marks all the time. The bell, yeah. So there's a card that's like the ceremonial dagger or something like that, and the whole point is it goes up like I don't know, like three or four damage every time you kill something with it with a final blow. Or it might be more than that. I it, it scales really well, and you can get it from a question mark place where it's like you see a whole collection of guys walking in robes. Uh, there's treasure on the ground and a dagger, and you get to choose to like run away, grab the treasure, or grab the dagger. And it's like it's, it's chance based, but always grab that dagger because I think it's like a it's free too, or so, or maybe one cost. It was real low, so it's like a free attack that scales if you use it at the last time. So it kind of sucks that it takes up a spot in your deck, but it can get so good late game if you get it early on. And I used to love getting that, especially with the uh, the Ironclad because you can buff your strength with him as well. So yeah. then it just gets stronger and stronger until you literally just have like a god dagger ready to kill something every turn. 
Oh my god, dude. When I was ironclad, the 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 one that I won, uh I had the thing that like the demon strength that every oh, like yeah. Oh my god, it's so good. So like, good. I I I don't know. Dude, the anyway. ironclad like, if you build block on the ironclad too and you get the uh like barricade with oh, I forgot what it was called. It's like bump or something. I don't know what it's called, but literally it just has a picture. It looks like Onion Knight like bouncing his belly into somebody. Oh, and I know what you're talking you, about. Yeah. You inflict your block damage on them or your the amount of block you have, it becomes your damage that you inflict on them. And so if you get the barricade, which is your block does not go down at the end of your turn. So then all of a sudden you just keep stacking up your block constantly. You're not taking damage until eventually you have like 600 block because you you keep doubling it. And then you just bop someone with it and just Jesus. blow them up. It's it's crazy the amount of synergies you can get going. And the whenever I was the ninja, I had because you get relics in this game. I had all three relics that give you block. I had the anchor for first turn, and then I yep. had the spoiler for the second one, and then I had what is it the 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 captain's wheel for the third one, and then I eventually towards the end of the run I got one that said if your block is fifteen, then if your block is greater than fifteen, you only lose fifteen blocks. So it carries over some of it because since I wasn't the the squire guy, I wouldn't. I, there was there was no other way I assume to yeah, carry the not. block over. So. I would go into turn four with like 30 blocks still. And like, if I didn't get hit, oh man, oh, that's so good. it was just so good. Which sucks though, because usually when you go into like a boss fight, the first two turns, they aren't attacking anyway. So I, every time I was like, oh, these relics aren't that good in the first place, really. But they actually Dude, are for all the other I, fights. I was so addicted to it because like I used to like come home for lunches and then just play Slay the Spire on my lunch yeah. instead of eating before going back to work. Yeah, I it was saw, so I, good. I went to because you could see your leaderboards and like you get a score at the end. And on the ironclad, you're way higher than me. But on that rogue, I am right next to you. Like Dude. that one run was like enough to honestly. Almost... The rogue is probably my lowest play class, but I enjoy playing it too. But it's very glass cannon. I feel like you're either yeah. blowing them up or you're blown up. Well, that's what I was saying. That was the game where Dontre was watching me, and I'm like, I'm so dead. I'm, it's over. And then I'm like, I'm living. I, dude, I had like two HP for like two fights. Like oh. I was like, oh. <laughs> and then I finally got to arrest. I was Part like, of the oh, cards. God, Part of the cards. <laughs> but that was the thing, dude. And that fucking rogue deck, I got so many cards that just let. I was filtering through my deck, man. Like on like turn three. By turn three, I would have like a a, a power that gave, let me draw and discard because that's the deck that lets you discard a card it's like i had a card that's like if this card's discarded draw two cards and yeah. then it's like another one it's like if this card's discarded get two power and i'm like and i'm just fucking filtering through it so fucking fast like i'm i'm li i was literally playing a magic the gathering deck like just a blue deck man i was oh, playing all the fucking ponders and 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 <laughs> ponders the other yeah i pondered the orb anyway so this part's good yeah uh, back to my thing. Yeah, I'm playing Tears of the Kingdom. I'm like two hours in and I've just completed the Same. first shrine. So I just got the God Hand. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's as far as I ever got. Yeah. And I got the game when, like, when it first came out. <laughs> <laughs> that's as far as I've made it. So not too much to report, except the game seems nice so far. Yeah, it's very chill. I want to play. You know what's really holding me back from playing the Switch is that I can't stream it. Uh, you know you what I mean? You can get a capture card if you want to do that. Yeah, or I'll, and get a better a computer and then just emulate your Switch games on your PC. <laughs> I do need a better computer too. Uh, I mean, maybe if I maybe in maybe in the tax season, but I I would like a capture card too because then I could stream Rock Band also. Because I can the, I could stream Rock Band, but the way that I would do it is I would have to stream it to the PC app. So that that's on the screen, and oh, then I God. can capture the, the screen. He's so bad. Yeah, and the quality's terrible. But also, it it so whenever you stream, there is a slight delay on the Xbox now because now it's trying to get me in the middle of the Xbox screen, the TV screen, and the monitor. Yeah. So it's like it's like impossible on expert difficulty on hard songs to fucking play. It's like the delay is not that bad, but it is enough to like completely make it impossible. It's not that bad when you're singing, so it's not. That's fine. Well, no, but, you can definitely keep pace while you're singing. Yeah, because you're not even really looking at the screen for the most part, if you're good at it. All right, and that rolls right into our what a nave buy section. You you wasting money still? Uh, yeah, I bought the season pass for Halo Infinite. Oh my god, you fool! 
But yeah, uh, way to go. support the developers for the games that you're not playing. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I did play it quite a bit with Dontre. I mean, oh, I played okay. some with Dontre and I played some by myself because they had Halo 3 maps, a bunch of them, and then uh, they're gone now. They're gone as of today. So, oh, no. As of two weeks ago when you're listening or something like that. What do you mean by gone? Like, can we not play them in custom games or are you just like they're out of rotation? I, I So they, whenever they got put, this, they just got released into their own playlist and i assume that they'll get scattered throughout the other playlists yeah, probably. or something but i don't really know because if you play if you play action sack or what is it rumble pit i don't know what it's called in the in halo infinite just like the goof goof off game mode they still have the tenrai maps like the japanese yeah, flavored saw, maps dude they still have those on the swat game type team tactical they still have yeah. the ninja maps there too so I'm assuming, because those maps that were on the Halo Three like playlist were fucking dope, man. And but what really sucked was, man, they put battle rifles in. Like it was it was assault rifles and pistols, I think, before. And then on the last like week, they switched it to assault rifle, battle rifle. And Try I hard, played, man. dude. That's it. Is I start. I went back to play it yesterday, and it was straight try hard mode, and it made me feel so sad. I was like, man. This was a lot funner before when the BR was stupid. something you had to pick yeah. up. Yeah. So I don't know. But I mean, it was still really fun. It was it was nice to play on the bridge and and what else? Whatever. Headlong. Yeah. yeah. High, High ground. ground. High yeah. Ground. Not headlong. Yeah. Headlong is a different one. All right. Anyway. With that, let's go right into our Patreon section. Let's thank our patrons. Mr. Quang, Insane Cracker, Nick and Knight, Michael Superbacker, the Galactic Pinecone. Thanks for all your support, boys. And dear listeners, if you're not one of our Patreon supporters, one of these five people I just named, which you most likely aren't, that's fine. But if you have a little bit of spare change this holiday season, think about giving the gift of giving us your patron money. And maybe we can buy Nave a better computer so he can actually start streaming some Rock Band Live, or not, not Rock Band Live, but him playing Rock Band as a live performer streaming. Because yeah, Rock I Band Live a, doesn't exist. I could be one of those... <laughs> One of those, uh, like, Rocksmith streamers. I don't know what they're called. Yeah. And with that, Nave, it's time for us to go on the internet to the deep reaches of Am I the Asshole on Reddit, find someone struggling with the question, wondering if they are, in fact, an asshole, and see if we can uh, weigh in on their their little statement. What do you got? All right. I'm going to scroll. I'm scrolling randomly, and uh, this one. That one. Link it. All right. I don't know which. I don't know what this is. <laughs> oh <laughs> okay this is interesting oh god this one <laughs> i just look at the, the description i'm like man i don't know about this one. Right. oh boy all right all right wait hold on which one which one? did i click on the right one hmm? oh yeah i clicked on the wrong one okay yeah so i think you read the last one so i'll read this one this, was, this one's from throwaway two nine nine eight one zero. I'm assuming that that means it's a throwaway account. It is, and they didn't put anything. They didn't do any replies or anything. Four years ago, would I be the asshole if I tell my boyfriend that I think his hobby is kind of creepy? It's title. So my boyfriend likes to play video games. What a nerd! No, okay. He likes to play video games and is particularly into this game called League of Legends. Oh, oh now no. he's a nerd. Yeah. I'm not into games at all, but I don't have a problem with my boyfriend being into them. Here is the thing. When he showed me the game, he told me that he likes to collect skins that are sold inside the game. They are like the same game characters, but with different clothes. Are you keeping up, Nave? Uh, it seems complex. Yeah, I know. I found that odd, but whatever. Then, I saw that most of the ones he had were of girls in kind of suggestive looking costumes that also looked like Sailor Moon characters. The, I the asked Star him, Guardians. Yeah, Star Guardians. It's a it's a big thing. They're very popular. There's even a second set, the the Pajama Guardians, where they're yeah. pajamas. Which is like, like even more popular somehow. Yeah, for some reason it's more popular than the fancy ones. Uh, let's see. Sailor Moon characters. I asked him about those and he showed me that it's like a set or something, like with lots of the girls dressed that way. Apparently, the, also, there's like two boys. I think there's Star Guardian, Tarek yeah. and Ezreal. Right? Ezreal, yeah. Is Tarek yeah. one? That's great. He might be a pajama guardian. I'm not sure. Apparently, those are his favorite. And a couple of them are even little girls. 
I didn't say anything at the moment. I almost but said I was nice. Less... <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but I was left thinking, and I would really like to know if this is something normal. But I guess since it's being sold in a popular game, and no one is saying anything but buy. Sorry, I read ahead. <laughs> no one is saying anything but buying revealing clothes for game girl characters. Is it for masturbation? <laughs> I was... <laughs> That's why I laughed earlier, is because I saw the next slide. So. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. I would like to say to my boyfriend that I find that kind of creepy, especially the ones involving little girls, but I would like to know what other people think. First off, <laughs> if I had to take a guess how many times I'm playing, like, top lane, and I see bottom lane die, and I'm like, they got to be masturbating. There's no <laughs> way they <laughs> laughing at her it's funny but they're not for masturbation <laughs> <laughs> this is really fucking this is the worst game to fucking try to do that to this is a, a very intense game yeah it's so funny <laughs> no, and i'm just scrolling the comments and it's like i sincerely doubt it's for masturbation <laughs> oh man are there any not the assholes uh, no, I mean, a lot of people are just outright saying that they're an asshole. The idea of people buying them for masturbation is utterly bizarre. <laughs> well, this is, wait, uh, oh, no, this says not. Nah. I thought it said not the asshole. It's two uh, two of the three letters. No nah says uh, means no assholes here. Oh, no assholes here. I thought they were saying nah. Oh, there's another one right underneath it. I was like, damn. Okay. I don't know how this shit okay, works. Okay, so clearly, I, I don't think she's an asshole just right off the top. She's just unaware. Or it has no gaming education to modern gaming environments. <laughs> that is a severe fucking jump in logic, though. It's like, he's got little girl skins dressed as Sailor Moon. Does he masturbate to children? Is that what he's doing? Like, Dude, Jesus. I know that's so funny is it was so fast. Like, <laughs> God. Incredible. Not to mention, it's not even like the League of Legends characters are that detailed because you're so far zoomed out when you're playing anyways. Like a lot of times you can't even see anything through all the particle effects. <laughs> yeah, you're you're like looking from a helicopter view. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I don't know. I own a lot of skins in League and I'm sure you do too. And so does Janna. Yeah. And I, I don't know. This is just a really funny statement. It's just that one <sighs> point. That but, was... Uh... I'm trying it to seems think. like something Kiryu would say in Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I saw a stupid meme that was about Kiryu doing like, or it might have not been Kiryu, but it was like a, the cabaret minigame where he has to charm girls in the cabaret. Yeah. And yeah. it's like you just have to say the most crooked things to them. And <laughs> I even seen you a screenshot of one of them where it's like Kiryu says like, I fuck anything with legs or something like that. And I'm like, why would Kiryu say that? <laughs> oh, dude, there's another one. It, it, it's funny. It, it, there's another one, though, that I was on. I, I think I shared it on Twitter or maybe I was just like same or something. But in the new in the new Yakuza game, almost all of them have like an underground like gambling site. I love how every time I open up Twitter, you just see me vanish. Dark. I'm going yeah. to dark now. <laughs> yeah, I'm gone. Fine. I'm gone. Finally. Dark mode. Uh, let me see. There is a fucking stupid picture. Let me let me find it. But basically, every single one of these Yakuza games has like an underground gambling den area. And <laughs> there is one where they everyone's always talking as you walk past. Here's another one. This is not this. This is not what I was trying to say to you. But I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. R1 plus triangle. Oh, okay. So you don't know about this either. Okay, so <laughs> there's this move called the tiger drop that Kiryu does. That is the most broken move made in any single video game. Okay, here's another one. I'm going on a mini tangent now. Okay, so, but anyways, there were people talking about if Kratos from God of War fought Kiryu from Yakuza, who would win? And this guy, you got to read this out loud, Philip. Uh, let's see. Because this guy says, because this guy's replying to it saying Kratos getting one-shotted. And then you read the rest of it. All right, Kratos versus Cosmic Hero. Uh, nah, Kratos, my guy. Ha Kratos has endangered Haruka. <laughs> <laughs> nah, my guy gonna body Kiru. I don't know which part am I talking. About? We're supposed to yeah, be reading here. There's two. There's two. There's two pictures. Oh, two pages. Okay. No, Kratos is a literal god versus some guy that is a yakuza. Lol, nah, Kiru gets bodied easy. Oh god, it keeps going. 
Tiger drop negates any damage. So if Kiri keeps Tiger dropping, he can't take damage from Kratos. I feel Kratos with Spartan Rage would still body him, though. Tiger drop negates any damage. So you're saying that a guy can negate damage, wins against a guy that literally two series worth of gods is immortal. Tiger drop negates any damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's our one triangle, Tiger drop. Anyways, all right, this is the last thing. And that was what I was trying to originally say before. That sometimes you just see people talking as you pass by them. And this guy is in the underground casino in like a Dragon Gaiden. The man who erased his name. <laughs> this is the guy like standing by the side. And I assume he, he just talks when you walk by. And he says, damn it, I lost. Oh, well, time for some titty. And <laughs> they replied, same, bro. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're fucking like 15 memes deep now. All right, so back to our post. The only one, also the only one that's a little girl is Zoe. That's a uh, star guardian. And she's an immortal god. So yeah, she's a million years old. This is the anime stuff old. that we talked about last episode. Yeah. Or a future episode. I don't know. I think it's a future episode. Yeah, they're all recorded already. So yeah, they're all of age, most likely. Probably. Probably. How old is... Uh... Soraka? No. I was going to say uh, the, the dragon flyy boy. Dragonfly boy. You know. He's a, he's infinitely years old because oh, he created Galia? everything. What's no. That? Oh, what? Oh, Aurelian Soul. Yeah. Aurelian Soul. That's his name. I knew. Yeah. I, I would have never guessed that. I would have never figured that and out. It's like now I'm trying to think of what is the youngest character. I'm like, Zach. Gotta be he Annie. was created in a lab. Oh, you're right. Zach is like two years old, isn't he? I don't know. He's like, he always talks about his mama, too. Yeah. The like, mama always said I was big I for my oh, age. Let me, let me Google it. Zach Age League of Legends. Make sure he's of age. <laughs> Zach is 10 years old. Whoa. Apparently. That's older than Annie, right? That's got to be older than Annie. I don't know. I really don't want to Google Annie's <laughs> age. Oh, <my> gosh. <laughs> uh, well. So, yeah, they're not all children, mostly. They just look like that. Classic. Classic. Anime. Excuse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so do you think she's an asshole? Real quick. Uh, no, she's just very, she just doesn't, I, that fucking jump and logic has me got, that, that put the fucking Metal Gear Solid exclamation point above my head, though. <laughs> I don't know if she was just taking the piss, you know, maybe Dude. she's just taking the piss and that was it's sarcastic like, and it's hard to read sarcasm in, in text. But. I know, the second highest comment is, I hope this is a shit post. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's, I can't tell. Incredible. Maybe, maybe talk to him or something. Like, <laughs> ask him. Yeah. Ask him. Like, how Have often a, do you dude, how often do you jerk off to these? Imagine, <laughs> imagine the uh, the the what is it called? Whenever you confront someone with a drug addiction. Oh my god! Oh, what is that called? Intervention. Epiphany? Intervention. Intervention. Imagine the intervention, man. <laughs> he just pulls up your League of Legends account and be like, "I see you own all these skins." I need Guardians. you to take a seat right there. And he pulls out a manila folder and flips through the <laughs> printed out Star Guardian characters. And oh, he's God. like, well, they were on sale as a set, so I got them all. But this one's my main and holds up, I don't know, Lux or something like that. And he's like, that's your main, huh? The child. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. Yep, yeah, no assholes here. Just really funny. I'm glad you picked that one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's <'cause> fucking awful. <laughs> I know that. Let's take a quick break and then we'll hit the meat. The music plays. Boom, 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 boom. Did you watch so, any more of that incel video? No, I didn't watch your incel video. I made it to, like I said, 58 seconds and I'm like, I can't do this. It, it was so difficult, wasn't it? I, that's what I was listening to at work and I was just Dude, like, it was just so oh, somber at the beginning. It's like, uh, whatever. It's like some men are shy boys so that they physically cannot approach romantic partners other boys are not shy but they just get always rejected when they approach romantic partners and these are incels boom boom <clears throat> sad music plays in the dude, background that's the thing too this is like a fucking 18 year old documentary dude this is an ye old youtube video an ancient one yeah i'm looking at the quality and i'm like this looks old dude it's so it's so wild because it's like it's proto. It's all of these people are just fucking. I'm I'm almost positive they're paid actors. Like like it is so incredible. <laughs> Some of the stuff how they, they say. act. Yeah, but this is the thing. Like one dude, he's like a certified 
a pickup artist in training, right? And he legit has Chris Chan comic books where it is women bucking. It is just Chris Chan's comics. It is literally the same. It looks the same. It is like colored in with crayon. It is insane. And he is constantly saying things. He, but first of all, he looks like skinny Michael Scott from The Office. And he is constantly, there is this guy who is like the sound guy. I think he's holding a boom mic or something. I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but he's always there named Kyle. And they are always <laughs> pointing him out. They're always like, because they're all, this is the thing. This is the, the documentary is called Shy Boys, by the way, everybody on the internet. We might link it. We might not. I'll link it. But um, so the 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 thing is like a bunch of these guys who can't get laid are all together in this like hotel room. I don't know what they're doing. I think they're going to a convention or something. And then this woman and this dude named Kyle are like filming a documentary while they're in the room and they're like interviewing them and stuff. And they are constantly like they're like if you want to get women you got to dress like Kyle. They're constantly pointing <laughs> Kyle out all the time and then the I camera mean, always shifts over how to hot Kyle. Is Kyle? <laughs> he just looks like a dude. He's got <laughs> what's crazy is he's got is these he better huge looking than the other dudes? Yes, he he looks just like normal. All the other guys just look exactly how you imagine a room with five incels in it. You you nailed it. That's what they all look like. And Kyle just looks like a normal dude, but he's got these huge sideburns. And I bet, <laughs> dude, it's so funny because they look so silly. But it's like, I bet if he knew that the camera's going to be on him so much, he would have shaved his sideburns. But he's constantly so uncomfortable because they're always like, they're it's always like comparing doesn't want to be a part of this. Yeah. Dude, I swear to God, the pickup artist guy, I swear, dude, the pickup artist guy wanted to fuck Kyle. Like, I don't think the pickup <laughs> artist guy is straight. Okay, he's, now I got to watch this. Just it's to so see weird. the chemistry. It is so weird that I don't know. <laughs> it's so weird. I know. I I saw um, Gino Samuel. Uh, he did a little trickle, saying, "Hey, get ready for the next Christian episode coming out. It's already oh, for the patrons or whatever." Oh so yeah, the it's next about one's, that time. So the next Chris history update should be coming out soon. Yeah, and then we can inform the the listeners. Like so we can four learn about weeks the, late. Yeah, the absolute evil that is Chris Chan. Dude, I have been watching. I see his tweets all the time. <laughs> like I, like the, the algorithm knows I want to see <laughs> what see, Chris Chan's opinion on p- Israel-Palestine is. Well, oh, no. <laughs> is he really weighing in? I don't know. I hope oh, not. Oh, God. I bet he has. Well, he's, he's Jesus probably Christ. Su- yeah, it's probably supportive, though, where he's, he's like, we need to stop the killing, okay? Yeah, he's probably got some <laughs> words to say about Israel. <laughs> oh, my God. I still can't. I keep thinking about it. This is a stupid Christmas special that you put out, you know, your listeners would probably be out for like a month ago at this point, where in you wash it, like, save somebody from drowning or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, I keep thinking about it. I'm like, I can't believe this is a thing. <laughs> Did I send you that alternate ending to Death Note? Yeah, you did. So stupid. <laughs> it's really funny. I'm looking at it now. I was trying to find Chris Chan, but anyways, I so for people who Death Note's an anime. If you haven't seen it, that's insane. But also, this isn't going to mean anything to you. But if you have seen it, this is funny. So it says Light Yagami. No, it's been seven minutes since I wrote your name in the Death Note. You should be dead. And then it says L, but it's spelled E L L E. This says L, who transitioned eight minutes ago. The only thing dead is that name. <laughs> so stupid. Oh, uh, that means Death nothing Note. to people who haven't seen that show. You know, Death Note is. I feel like it's the best bad anime almost. You know, it's so stupid. Yeah, but it's take also a chip st- and then I'll yeah. eat it. I'm going to spend a whole episode setting up a secret trap in my drawer. So if my mom tries to find my secret diary book, it'll set itself <laughs> on fire. But it has an extra ca- compartment so I can pull out a single piece of paper and no one will notice. But it's so funny because if she found it, it would just say, it would just say <laughs> death note. And she'd open it up and there's just names in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, no. If you what touch a death you- note, you can see the Shinigamis. Oh, no, you're right. I forgot about that's important. <laughs> that's incredibly important. <laughs> yeah, you literally see the demon in the room yeah. that eats apples. <laughs> Did just imagine you walk into Boodles' room and there's just a death note with yeah. like people's names written in it and that's it. What would you do? <laughs> I, def- well, I, I would definitely touch it a whole bunch. <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> but is yeah, she actually hello? on death row? Like, <laughs> do you know? The- you know, this is something I think about. Like, how quick do you start doing crimes as soon as you get a superpower? At all, you know, like instantly, I'm already out there robbing banks and stuff. <laughs> That's the thing, dude, is that, like, there's so many cameras that how – the government would be on you so fast. That's what I would be worried about because so, there was this thing that they were like, get uh, get $10 million or you have Spider-Man superpowers. And people are like, I'll just become Spider-Man and then steal $10 million worth of shit. And I'm just like, yeah, but, like, what happens when – like, what happens when the government is like, what is that? And they – like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't think the government's coming after you, like, right away? Yeah, uh, well, the other thing is, like, uh, it can, like we're just talking about the Death Note thing. I'm really bad at spelling, and there's no <laughs> autocorrect on the Death Note. <laughs> Not to mention, it's like a lot of people have really kind of foreign-sounding names, too. Yeah. Like, so I probably couldn't spell anyone's name correctly if I really wanted to kill him. Yeah, like, like Johnny to... Knoxville. Like, what the fuck? There's a silent K. There's probably yeah. two L's. Which that just makes me wonder, like, since I've been studying Japanese, when Light is writing down people's names... You have to know, like, the specific kanji that they use to spell their name. So it's like, what if you never saw their name written down? You wouldn't know how which kanji they use to spell it. Because your name could be Jeremy, but you could spell it with different kanji than another Jeremy. That's complex. Yeah. What the Death Note is in English, though, even in the Japanese. It's De- written just Death Note. <laughs> does Light write in English in it? Like, does he use Roman letters or does oh, he use man. Japanese? That's, I don't know. I think he writes in English. I gotta now. I gotta look. He's supposed to be a very well educated, dude. So I well, wouldn't doubt that he knows English. Just Death Note. Just but it type also in Death Note videos. Is, it also <laughs> <laughs> Death Note anime music video, 2002 yeah. Lincoln Park. <laughs> Lincoln Park. That's exactly we always <laughs> crawling in my skin. God, All right. So good. The trailer's got to have him writing in in death in death in English. In the God Death damn Note. It. <laughs> oh wait hold on this is the thing where it shows the rules written out oh, oh no it but says it in english and in japanese oh uh, okay see that's the other relevant part it's like if these are gods of death why are they so language specific that's like you have to oh, spell their name wait dude i think it's in english and in japanese so it doesn't I think matter he what you write right. i think he writes the names in english and japanese oh at the same time yeah, it looks weird. Or either, or it's either English and Japanese, or he writes it in English, and then this is the time of day that oh, he wants yeah. them to die. Yeah, you can write the tell. details. So he probably writes their name in the Roman letters or English letters, and then writes the details in Japanese. This is yeah. so specific oh, for no I'm one. I'm pretty sure that in Death Note, they say that the, the rules of the Death Note are written on the book. I'm pretty sure it says that they're written in English and Japanese for whoever finds it. Mm. as if there are no other fucking languages, languages yeah. i feel like it does say that there it's written in multiple languages but it looks like he writes in english or at least like a latin language like using not in kanji okay this is for nobody yeah <laughs> this is a fucking awful conversation which if you write uh if you use like the english alphabet but you're writing japanese they call it romanji so like just sounding out like typing in baka mitai <laughs> 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 but that's how they type if they're using like an, a, a QWERTY keyboard that they will literally oh, yeah. type that out and it will turn into their runes. Yeah, that's how that's how it is. in uh, that's what Mandarin. I had a friend named Jack and I watched him type because he would text his parents and they and he types and they they use what's it called? The it's it's like WhatsApp, but but Chinese. And like, and it and it does the thing. It just translates it. They'll be like "hello," and then it just says "hello" in Chinese letters. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Anyways, our game of the week: Dungeons Four. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did we have a break already? Yeah, oh, that, that was, was the, the that was the break. Holy shit! So this game, developed by Realm Forge, which did Tropico and Railway Empire. I've played Tropico. Yeah, for for a little bit. Yeah, for just like maybe a couple hours. I think Tropico and Four was a Games for Gold, wasn't it? I think so. And Calypso Media, which publishes Tropico in <laughs> Railway Empire. They seem Gasp! to be a duo. Yeah, I know. Dungeons 4 was released November 9th, 2023. So this is a fresh hit. This just dropped. Story Wait, description. What? This just came out? Was this a day one game pass? It might have been, actually. What a get. Good job, Microsoft. Uh, yeah. The absolute evil and its trusted cough servant, the dark elf Thyla... 
returned in Dungeons 4 after the events of its fabulous predecessor to bring about their triumph over the forces of good once more. Forty nine ninety nine Steam Store. Just uh, edit that for you. Add an S. <laughs> hey, I, I copy and pasted it from the Steam Store. That wasn't me. That apparently uh, had a weird grammar issue. So history with the series, I think I own Dungeons 3, but I've never <laughs> yeah. played it. I'm in pretty fact, sure Dungeons I, 3 is a games for gold because <laughs> I think I have it too. <laughs> yeah, and we played maybe five hours of this game. Maybe I played like 30 minutes more than you. Yeah, because you had to beat the level we lost. Yeah, we're going to get to that. So first off, I want to talk about the this game is not a triple A game. <laughs> it is yeah, th this is the thing is that so me and philip we had a game philip was like we're playing this headbangers game and like cool and i can never connect for some reason i don't know why and so i, I philip was like well will you fucking pick a game and i was like okay and i just picked the first one i saw that had co-op in the in the in the description and then it was this and so neither of us had any fucking clue what we were getting into philip watched surprising. the trailer Dude, the trailer was wild. Like, it is just like, they just have like scrolling background animations of just the map. And then they have JPEGs of the characters come up. Not animated, just still frames, but they wiggle like South Park characters, <laughs> which is less animation than South Park characters. And they have voiceovers. And it's like, we're back again from the third game. And I'm like, this is the most low budget Fiverr bullshit I have ever seen. This in trailer for this fucking video game on sale for $50, it looks like our it looks like our thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> it's insanely low low effort. Not even it's not like it's low quality because it looks okay, but it, it's like have you seen any other game trailer before you made this one? <laughs> like seriously, you could just have one one intern, one guy be like, "Look, for the rest of the week, just work on a trailer." Okay, it doesn't have to be wild. Just use in-game assets and just scroll around. We'll remove the HUD, whatever. That would look better than whatever bullshit they tried to make here. Yeah, dude, just don't even... They tried too hard with the JPEGs moving. Just no JPEGs at all. Just like, <laughs> just scroll around on the fucking game. It would have been better. Yeah, it would have been better. You didn't even need a dialogue or voiceover either. You could have just played heavy rock music as you just scrolled around and all the monsters fighting each other. And I would have been into that. <laughs> Yeah, some fucking Three Days Grace or whatever yeah. on Lincoln Park. <laughs> Lincoln Park, yeah, it'd be great. <clears throat> Man, okay. th that's the thing is that like there are you go on like YouTube and watch lyric videos for 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 songs like official lyric videos, and it'll be like the album art, and it just pans in and out and mo and moves like around a specific quadrant of the art, yeah. and the lyrics are there, and it's like you could have just did that with like the default picture of this game you know what i mean just <laughs> scrolled into different parts of the picture i don't know man and it's so funny the main theme music that they played in the trailer is also the main menu music the second you start <laughs> the game up <laughs> yeah and we're looking at it and like man the cover is the most generic fantasy looking bullshit i have ever seen it's like a dark elf lady standing on a throne with just hordes of monsters around her and that's it. Yeah, it's like, you, you know what it made me think of immediately, though, was fucking, uh, what is it, Overlord? Yeah, I thought so, that too. Okay, but before we get away from the Dark Elf Lady, Th Thalia, Thalia, however you pronounce this, she has alternate costumes you can choose in the game. <laughs> yeah, she's a Star Guardian costume. Yeah, she's a Star Guardian costume. Right Dude, that's so wild. They give you an option to make her a, a, a Sailor knockoff Moon. Sailor Moon, oh, which man. I thought was funny. Which is what Star Guardians are in League of Legends. Man. Good stuff. That's wild. Yeah, I didn't plan that. I just picked a random one. Mm, it's uh, fortuitous. That happened last episode too, didn't it? Or next episode. I don't know. I'm Maybe. Confused. So the dialogue in this game. For one, the narrator is the same one from that one walking game. The Stanley Parable. Yeah, that one. The door opening simulator. Yeah. So that was fun to hear that voice again. Yeah, it's it's just such a shame that he's saying such fucking dumb. What is the writing dude, in this game, dude? You talked about that. You're like, man, coming off of Alan Wake, coming <laughs> off of the writing of Near Autonoma, and I'm coming out of Metal Gear, and then we have to listen to mostly the the Th Thalila arguing with her stepbrother, just doing dumb t-rated banter yeah, i don't even know what to describe what it is it is literally like 
Power Rangers age group demographic of like you I'm gonna kick your butt and you're gonna wish you were never <laughs> born. He's like, I would like to see you try, you ugly man. But? I can't even think of you <laughs> butt. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even think of childish because they you don't say moron in child TV cartoons, do you? Moron's pretty harsh. You could call him an idiot at one point, I think. Hey, I'm back. Time to kick a little hero butt. Forward, creatures! Show me what you can do. What did uh what did that blonde shit call the football headed guy in that cartoon? You blockhead. Arnold. Blockhead? No, wait. Mm. That might be it. I don't, I don't know. know. See, I thought matter. you were talking about peanuts at first. He just said peanuts. <laughs> I don't know why my brain went straight to Hey Arnold. Because I don't even like that show. But I was like, I was like someone who insults someone. And I'm just thinking of that. What's her name? Helga? Yeah. Helga. Well, let's see. If we just go through our Nickelodeon backlog, we have, uh, we have Twerp from Fairly Odd Parents. To me, it's called oh, Twerp yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, let's Twerp. see. There's some angry, angry beavers, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? Who calls what in that? <laughs> I don't what know. What does Pinky uh, call? What does Brain call Pinky? He's got to his- call Fucking probably Pinky. something He's got ignoramus a- or something. <laughs> Nimrod. <laughs> yeah, ignoramus. That's got to be it. Yeah. Something I'd so, never be able to remember as a child. They have this cartoonish dialogue, which is then egged on by the narrator, who is always breaking the fourth wall, talking specifically to you. And you are the absolute evil in this game. And your job is to basically defend Thalea or save her or whatever. The whole game, she's being slowly kidnapped by her brother. I don't know. We only made it like four to five <laughs> missions in before yeah. I realized there were like 23 missions. And I'm like, we're not doing this, Nave. I cannot stay in this game anymore. There's a little spoilers for our final final words, but I did not enjoy my time with this. Yeah, it's a weird it's a weird one for so sure. The, the game's not very funny, but let's talk more about like what the gameplay actually is. So this did the minecraft legends thing where this is a semi rts semi base builder where we play co-op and we share units and first off the tutorial mission ran at like 60 percent speed it was so slow for some reason it's not even like the the frame rate was bad because the frames seemed fine it was just everything moved in slow motion yeah and that was the thing too because philip you hadn't played yet but while you were downloading the game i I don't know because my fucking internet's super fast. I just was fucking around in single player and I was like I, a million percent sure it was moving in slow motion. <laughs> so yeah. while we were waiting for the fucking end of the first level for like five minutes for our troops to win the fight, Philip was Googling it and he's like, yeah, sure enough, everyone's complaining about this. This is a known issue. It's just something that's currently happening. Maybe it's because we're playing it so near launch and they just haven't patched it. But that was annoying. But it, they, it fixed itself in the next level. So it wasn't a big deal. And this is where we got into some very, like, we instantly fell into niches where Nave just became the dungeon management guy, and I became the move units around on the overworld guy. Because the game does a pretty cool system of, you basically get different controls if you're underground or above ground with, like, what you need yeah. to be doing to play. Like, the underground, you did more of that, so how you talk about it? Um, so the UI and the controls are not great. Oh, dude, underground. They're, so, they're so bad. They feel so bad to use. Yeah, I got used to it after fucking six, five hours. After at the end, I was like, okay, I can kind of manage down here. And every now and then, I'd go above ground and I'd look at what you're doing and I'd move some people around. I'd fuck with you a little bit. And then, but I was just like, man, it, it make it is so intuitive up here. Like, it's it simpler. is so much easier. It is so simple because you're only you just click to move. Yeah, so when I'm down at the bottom, I'm like, I'm like, all right, which trigger is it to open up the general fucking circle so that I can Dude, move to the other? Uh, there's you have two like three rings. separate triggers. No, okay, it's like you have left bumper, right bumper, and then Y all open different wheels that you then need to scroll around, and they even like alternate into each other. Like you can go from the Y wheel to the right bumper wheel if you press like right bumper while you're in that wheel. It's <laughs> like it is so weirdly designed. Yeah, so usually when I needed something, I would just hit bounce through all of them, like just hit them all rapidly and just like, oh, I think it was right trigger. I think, I don't know. I do feel that it, like you made, like at first I thought you're like, man, Nave really has a shitty job managing the base, but I don't think managing the base is that hard because whenever I went back, we lost a level, by the way, 
and I didn't want to force Nave to replay it, so I replayed it on my own. So I did the above ground and below ground stuff. And man, it was easy controlling the base and stuff. Like once I got going, I'm like, bam, you just you just do mm. the stuff. Yeah, yeah, I got used to it after a little bit, but it was mostly like so whenever this game suffers from like since we are both doing the same base and every we're sharing everything it inherently forces you to split in half one person controls the units one person is doing fucking everything else and then it's like when philip was up there like waging war i'm just down there like waiting for him to get done and so i do the minecraft thing of just hollowing out the inside of a mountain because i'm bored you know what i mean and just getting like 27 chests of cobblestone i just literally would just hollow out the entire map while i'm waiting on philip to beat everything and then philip would be like hey nave i really need some more units i'm like oh oh shit okay and then i just spawn them <laughs> and send them your way or no you don't even need to do that because as soon as they spawn philip just hits a button and he just comes and yoink and yeah, they just fucking teleport them out. yeah <laughs> yeah so that's the thing is like the whole underground part is that, like you're able to build traps you're supposed to be setting up big defenses and building an economy down down underground so when the heroes try to brave the dungeon to kill your dungeon heart, they can't make it in. And we lost because I had all the units upstairs. The traps weren't in the right position because there were four different entrances to our dungeon. So yeah. No, so at first, when we first started, there was only one en entrance. So I put like a million traps in that one entrance, <laughs> and then as Philip went around the top area, he unlocked more and more entrances to our dungeon, probably so that you could get your units there faster. Yeah. But what ended up happening was the, the enemies just got to us in. around the traps, and they just were able to beeline it straight to our heart. And I'm like, Nave, there's people on. No, I think you said there's people on our base when they were already like hitting the heart. Yeah. And then you all like all the arms are going off on my screen I'm like fuck when did that happen so then i try to recall my units to get down there and they are so slow and in this level it was a tutorial semi-tutorial it was introducing the undead to us which yeah. they took away our spell casting abilities in the last level in the yeah. last level they gave us a teleporter so it was like hey if you want to teleport your units around you can just spend some mana and spawn a teleporter well they didn't give it to us in the undead level there's no ma no man, no magic. <laughs> so you had to walk so all like, the way back. Yeah, I'm like, I guess I'm walking. Meanwhile, <laughs> the zombies are the slowest characters in the game, it seems. And it, I couldn't even make it to the dungeon entrance before they blew up our heart and killed us. And we lost like 40 minutes of gameplay. We were very um, disheartened. Dude, I was... I don't know if you can tell, but I was raging. <laughs> I was just like... Philip was like, how did Nave out of that happen? And I was like, I don't even know. I don't know where they came from. How did they get past you? Like, it's like you're waging war up there. That's the other thing. It's like, I'm waging war up there, but like the maps are so big and the units are so slow. And even the fog of war is so small. And they just walked around me when I didn't see them and went straight down the mine shaft. Cause there's only like two guys in our base, but all of our gobos are just running around and collecting gold still. And I'm just like, none of these guys could hit them Pick with a, a pickaxe, pickaxe or something. Yeah. Like what the fuck's going on? So that that's really sucked. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I looked at a bunch of Steam reviews just to see what people were saying. And everybody is saying this is the same game as three, but they just streamlined everything. They really kind of noodled everything down. Same units, the same assets. The only thing new is like some level designs and voiceover. And they also simplified the economy. Apparently it was more complex in the third game. Oh my God. So that sounds intense. Yeah, so this is the uh, the oblivion to the more wind that was the last <laughs> game. <laughs> it feels like oblivion. <laughs> it feels weird. It's weirdly simple, but also not that fun. Yeah, it's weird. It, I wonder if the game would be more fun if we both had our own dungeons. I feel like it would. Even because, if, or if we had know. our own little snots, or even if we shared the same dungeon space or something like that. I don't know. Like. Like, if we were both underground, but our dungeons weren't connected or something like that, yeah, but we could connect them if we wanted to. It was like, like each... the first thing I did. Every yeah, game. Like, just build a super long, one-by-one <laughs> one Tesla Fucking, tunnel yeah, straight to each other. Musk, Elon Musk uh, route. Except the, the, it takes so long for units to move around. Even underground, it's like, I'm just going to scoop them up. And I kept accidentally scooping up the little snots, yeah. which are your workers. And I'm like, crap, I got like 60 dudes in my hand. I got to drop them. 
Yeah, you pick them up and it instantly just teleports them to your hand wherever your hand is at. And I would be like building a fucking, I would be excavating a tunnel for our fucking chicken coop. And Philip just yanks all the fucking goblins away. And I'm like, well, I, I, I was building something. Which I really like kind of how they do the dungeon building where it's like you have to clear out the room and then you mark the room as like, this is the commercial district where all the gobblers live. <laughs> yeah, like Sim City. Yeah, like Sim City. So I, I like that aspect. And depending on how the walls are placed, they become more or less efficient. Yeah. And it makes me wonder if it gets to a point where it's like, if a room is too big, does it become less efficient? Maybe. I like, don't know. It... I That was the weird thing is because Philip kept extending rooms, but I was just building new rooms. Like, I, I don't know why <laughs> I never thought to extend a room by a little bit. I would always just make another like area because there's so much, there's so much dungeon. So I always just made another room somewhere else. Well, I'm sure in the later levels, the dungeon gets limited in how it's placed. Like, I know in, when we were in the undead level, there was some stone that we could not quarry yet unless we got the, like, we upgraded our gobos to, like, level three or something. There was also dwarves in, like, the second level or something. So if we dug yeah. so far one way, we would bump into the dwarves. So it probably encourages you to stay small until you get really strong. Which I feel like that's not fun gameplay in an RTS for me. Like I don't enjoy like staying until I'm in the mid medieval era before I attack. I want to have a little bit of fight in the Bronze Age, you know? Yeah, dude. That's partly like, dude. I remember when I was a kid, I used to play Age of Empires, and I would just make a custom map and with just me on it, and I would just farm everything, <laughs> and I would just like have fun <laughs> doing that. So you're just playing like a uh, cookie clicker. Just getting yeah. as big as possible. And just making farms and like, I'm like, this is aesthetically pleasing. You know, you get the four farms like around because the farms are just slightly too big to like be able to make a nine pattern. You know what I mean? With the yeah. farm in the middle. So you have to make like a swastika of apple <laughs> archers. You know what I mean? Of course. <laughs> the windmill of happiness around the windmill farm. But um, it is a, uh, it is I don't know. It's 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 mildly pleasing to just like farm an economy in games like this. Oh yeah. So and I love collecting all the resources. There was hatred, there was gold, there was dead bodies were a resource for a while. Yeah. That was the then that was for the zombies. And the hatred was funny because I didn't you have to farm that on the upper on the upper area of most. Yeah, you do that by killing enemies. You get hatred. Yeah, so we got stun locked for a little bit because we didn't know how to make hatred. So we were like, when you need hatred to like level shit up. So I had like everything maxed out to as far as I could go. And we're just sitting there like, man, Nave, I need this thing. And I'm just like, I don't know how to, I don't know where this <laughs> hatred comes from. So Philip learned that you smack chickens, you, you can, can kill get the hatred. gobblers and get hatred. <laughs> so Philip just run around slapping like... everything to death. <laughs> God, this game is so stupid. So, I mean, I, I really, the problem is I wanted to like this game. Like, I'm like, man, I, I could probably even played this game without Nave. But this game just, it's just not fun to play. I did put on a podcast and just kind of zone out while I played that one level without you, but I could not keep doing it. I wanted to do literally anything else. Yeah, it's tough. This game scooped right into the, right into the, underneath the line to, for our game of the year. Worst games of the year's. Uh, this one might make it for worst game of the year. <laughs> I don't remember what else we played this year, though. So we'll yeah, have I don't to see. Really remember either. But this one is now semi in the running. It's for game it's of a, the year. For worst game of the year. <laughs> All right. What are the problems that we have with this? I don't know. Yeah. See, I just didn't get enough dopamine. You know, like I would always get like maybe five minutes of this game was like ah, I'm having a good time, and then after that, I'm just like ah, I don't want to play anymore. Every single level would be like that. Like the the beginning where you I'm think like, we're being like tutorial locked. Was it because we were being forced to play in a certain way? Do you think it was probably stopping us? Maybe. I mean, that's a good question because we. What was the next level like? Did you get to the no, level? I, after? I didn't want to play it. <laughs> yeah. Because that next level would have probably been the one that was like, all right, you're free to do whatever yeah, the fuck like, you want. Here, you can now build demons, undead, and goblins, or orcs, or whatever. You can build whatever you want. Feel free to, you know, basically problem solve to beat this level. Instead of I just following the exact recipe that they force you to go down. 
it seemed very limited, but I'm sure it was just because we didn't have too much stuff. But even the even then, it's like everything had like three tiers, and there was only so many different traps that we had uh, access to in the first five levels. So it's like even like me just sitting there, you know, fucking twiddling my thumbs, waiting for the the army to win. I'm like, I don't even really have a whole lot I can do down here besides watch Philip. No, just yeah, the co-op Earth. doesn't make sense. Like, I almost want to say, like, co-op always makes the game better. But this game probably doesn't need co-op. Yeah, it, I mean, or if it, like, it, it feels like it would be better if we had separate things. If we were doing separate things. Yeah. I don't know. It reminds me of when, we didn't play much of it, but Age of Empires 2 had co-op where it's like one person was just doing the campaign normally and then the other person was just there. Yeah, he was just another Usually. player. And that's almost fine, too. Like, even if they're playing with just uh, give me a random horse army to run around with and scout or something. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I want to go back to Age like, of Empires 2. <laughs> Re-add it to the list so we can hit it again. Yeah. We well, I mean, a there's full... a console version now. We could play that. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah. Well, I was looking at the Steam review, seeing if we could find anybody saying anything funny about this game, but there's nothing funny about this game. Or no one had anything funny to say about it. <laughs> Really? Nobody? Yeah. I mean, there's a couple people just throwing out quotes from the game. That's not so funny. I know. It's like, and then the absolute evil decided to go leave a Steam review. Because it was like, after every yeah. objective if you complete, the narrator says, the absolute evil then did this. And like, I guess that's what I'm about to do. Oh, it's like the Stanley parable or something. Oh, it's just like that. Except you can't disobey him. You have to do what he says. You have to do what he says. I don't wonder know. what Dungeons 3's Dungeons 3 is $7 what is a that deal? on sale? yeah it is on sale okay, never mind. I was like holy shit does this have better so, reviews? let's just sort by no, I funny mean, doesn't, Dungeons 4 w had a really positive reviews I think it had a good Metacritic too like this game is well received but I just didn't find it fun maybe it's not for us hmm Warcraft 4 written by Deadpool yeah, I guess this game's just not for us. <laughs> I don't know. Because I didn't really find this game that funny in any of the writing. I thought the units were kind of funny. The little snots and the gobblers. I like that. I got but, a good chuckle the first time you slapped a turkey. Yeah, like that's funny. But like the, any of the other characters now, I wasn't in it. Yeah. Well, there's one time you slapped a turkey and I was like, oh, you can slap the turkeys. And then I slapped the turkey and it just exploded into death. Like, cause, like <laughs> You can only slap them like twice. <laughs> yeah. So that's funny. Do you see that? Uh, do you see that dog that I sent to the chat with the the six things shaved into its forehead? Yeah, because the Krillin dog. Yeah, it says the person was like the translation is is exactly what you think it is, and you <laughs> translate it from Japanese, it just says Krillin. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a dog oh, with the six God dots shaved into its forehead. <laughs> Krillin. <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why it's shit like that's so funny. Yeah, I think it's funny because it just makes makes you think that people in other countries have the same sense of humor as us. You just one just, word. Yeah, just by no any language change it'd be like Krillin. Dude, have you seen there's this fucking Twitter account that I that I follow called Crop Yakuza memes, and there's an amazing one that just says banter and but I don't <laughs> and you don't see any of the other words, it just says banter, and it's 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 Kiryu holding a, a a moped above his head, and there's a guy in the background screaming in fear. And it's just <laughs> so fucking funny. Quality memes. Any more me points for this game? Uh no. I forgot we were talking about a game. All right, let's take a break and then we can hit our final words. Music plays. Boom, 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 boom. This one turned out pretty good. I'm still looking at this stupid post. Is it what? for masturbation? <laughs> Is it for <laughs> masturbation? It's because you almost attach that to like anything. Like, maybe yeah. I, maybe you bought the new Alan Wake. Is it for masturbation? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what are you talking? <laughs> It's, it's just such a, a bizarre twist at the end there. It's like, Nave, I, I, re, I saw that you uh, were watching the moist critical Mr. Krabs on ketamine speed run again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That was a good twist. 
I think right. that. What's I up? don't know. <laughs> I just think that that's such a bizarre jump. That's, I've said that like eight times, but that's so incredible. It's funny. So good. And we're back. Dungeons 4. I'll take these first final words, Nave. This game is going to be a not recommend for me. <gasps> you don't need to play this. Literally go play Age of Empires. There's other RTSs or even like go play Orcs Must Die if you want like the dungeon trap lane game or whatever. Maybe Dungeons 3 is better. I don't know. But this game, it's just not hitting any spots for me. Like there's some funny little animations or bits, but I don't like the writing. It's not hitting. Maybe we didn't play far enough to actually enjoy the game. But then again, if a game doesn't get good until five hours in, maybe it's not a great game. Don't say that. And now, I mean, now I've got to lower my Starfield review to, to seven now. What Starfield? Starfield starts out pretty strong, though. Because like, I think it? within the first like five hours, I was doing the Mantis mission. I don't know. Well, maybe I'm making up making up arguments in my head now. Well, no, I'm trying to think of other games that are bad for the first five hours. I think um, most Western RPGs are bad at the beginning because you're the at, you're at your weakest. You're at your least capable. That's like the whole point of Western RPGs. True. It's to get See, better. It's like you, when you play Morrowind, you can't jump and like <laughs> you can't you can't walk <laughs> more than ten feet in Morrowind yeah. without, you know, without your green bar going all the way down, and then you walk slower. <laughs> the game is such a fucking filter on it for the first like twenty hours. It's like you swing your sword, and it's like, hey man, uh, imagine rolling a hundred sided dice. Since your sword skill is twenty five, you need to roll under twenty five for it to hit. So that means one in four sword swings are going to hit. Oh, by the way, I see you didn't pick sword skill as a main, you know, skill to start with. <laughs> so your sword skill is actually 10. So you will hit one in 10 times. And since it's not, it's pure probability, there's a chance you can swing your sword 400 times and still not hit <laughs> because there's no like safety for this randomization. It and is you also need random. to make sure that you're in range. Like you got to yep. still pretend that you have the, that you're in sword range. You can't just swing yep. wildly. God, that. What a great game. We need to go back and play it again on the stupid mod. The fucking the multiplayer server? Yeah. Oh, I think those servers are still hosted. I get they gotta be. They gotta be. There's another game. It, it might be called like Darkest Dungeon. Have you heard of this one? Darkest Dungeon? Yes. I, is that the, the one? The fucking where the, scary game where you go crazy? No, no. Am I thinking of Darkest Dungeon? No, there's another one. It's like oh darker than black or something hold on that sounds like a philosophy book no apparently darker than black is an animu hold on no there's a there's a game darkest darkness is that it i love just going to my google and seeing things that i've no nope. darkest already. darkness is a book that you can read in elder scrolls morrowind and oblivion and skyrim uh what is this game it was it's like imagine a battle royale Morrowind inside a Skyrim or not Skyrim like a, a Dark Souls type dungeon where it's actually dark as hell and you have to carry torches and you form a squad of like three dudes and there's literally monsters that will just beat your ass and it's Tarkov style where if your character dies it's dead for good and so you drop in with your boys where we drop in you try to explore and find that your treasure and then get out before <laughs> before you get murdered and get permadeath oh, that's a fucking joke for the future god yeah, damn it the kids are gonna love it like the you adults are gonna... <laughs> yeah, uh, you're talking about two worlds no two worlds is another one hold on let me see let me go to twitch and i bet if i look up like most played games dark and darker is the name of the game yep i would have never figured that out here take a look at this gameplay because i feel like this could be a great co-op game for us but uh, here's just a streamer playing it. Skip to like an hour in, like an hour 50 or something. Dude, I get so many better help. I get nonstop better help ads. What does that say about me? Look at this fucking. It looks like Unity asset flip. Yeah. Morland. Yeah, this game was <laughs> not like very good. God. It is like the attacks look so slow and cumbersome. He did the lightning and he just raised his hand a little bit and the <laughs> lightning came down from the See, ceiling. This looks like a double A game that I would really enjoy. This might even be single A. 
Also, do your final words. Uh, I don't. I don't recommend this game. Yeah. All right. So, Nave, now it's that fine. we did that, let's uh, figure out what we're playing next week, which is what we've been doing for the last like ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, you know? What I think we should play next week. What? I think we should you, play mobile by game. next week. By uh, by being like three weeks. Yeah. So I'm thinking. How about I'm gonna put this out there. Call of Duty Mobile. Does that still exist? Yes, I mean, it's it on its fourth anniversary right now. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> or what like, about oh. Genshin Impact? I don't know, but I'm a less like I'm less. That seems like I'm scared of that game. I'm gonna be honest. I'm scared of that game because I I'm afraid I'll play it and be like, oh my god, oh no, I want to play this now. Like I want to play it. It seems like a game that gets you stuck if you yeah, if you get your you're playing it on your you. phone. How good could it be? Yeah, you're right. It's only like, like if you're playing on your PlayStation, then maybe I could feel like that could suck you in. But phone games, I mean, you're going to want to be able to like I know specifically because I've played like 10 minutes of Genshin. It does not let you play anything in the background while you're playing it, which I find really yeah. annoying. You can't listen to a podcast when you play it. That's oh, you can't even have one. music and stuff. No, that's the number one like stopping factor that stops me from playing it is that I can't listen to a podcast while I play it. That fucking sucks. Not even like Spotify music. Oh, maybe you can do it on like an Android, but on iPhone it will let you. Huh. Yeah, I mean that sounds like something Android would be fine with. And with that, thanks for joining us this week, co-op partners. Be sure to join us next time so we can all I don't know, what did we do this week? <laughs> I don't know. Dude, there's a million <laughs> things we could have quoted and we just forgot. Yeah, everything. I forgot everything we did this week. We can possibly masturbation together. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh, oh. <laughs>